What happens when a Lady Gaga fan interacts with Gaga's online materials? How can fans transcend barriers between the audience and the celebrity? Can Lady Gaga fans play a role in Gaga's activist causes? I investigated throughout my research and firsthand how new media enables fans to play an active role in Lady Gaga's transgressive gender and sexuality activism and to connect with Gaga herself. I'm actually uh, finishing a Master's of Women's and Gender Studies and I'm writing my thesis on Lady Gaga's You and I and House of You videos as a form of internet activism. Health and safety hazard and that I need to put on a shirt while men walk around topless. Uh, Lady Gaga spoke to me from the stage. In addition to my own experience, I thoroughly investigated theories of gender and sexuality as performative, social, and historical constructs, as well as theories about convergence and participatory culture. I used these to analyze several fan-made recreations of Lady Gaga's House of You film series. Within my analysis, I paid specific attention to how fans use new media platforms and social networking capabilities to re-communicate Gaga's original images, build upon her activist messages, and embody her alter egos as a form of identity transgression. Throughout my investigation of the ways in which the fans in my chosen reception texts use Gaga's personas to embody marginalized gender and sexuality identities and subvert normative social expectations, I paid close attention to several emergent themes within these images. Social conceptions of these images as empowering, hypersexualized, or performative became clear. Some critics argued that Gaga's House of You materials provided an example of empowerment based on identity, while others overlooked positive aspects in favor of concentrating on how inappropriate it is of Gaga to reveal her body to the public. Others still argued that the short films were merely a spectacle intended for media attention. Gaga takes it all off. MTV hired Lady Gaga to open the VMAs, but... Prince and Bob Dylan's love child showed up instead. Lady Gaga, she left me! She said it always starts out good, and then the guys, meaning me, I'm one of the guys. We get crazy. Couldn't tell. Mr. Calderon's four-minute anti-Gaga rant puzzled even the most unfazable celebs in attendance. In my own concert experiences, which I attended dressed as Gaga's transgressively female persona, Yu Yi the Mermaid, I faced backlash when I was told that I must put on a shirt even though men were permitted to attend nearly naked. I was informed by venue security staff in both Toronto and Montreal that the fact that my breasts looked bare, even though they were securely covered, was a public health and safety hazard because I was female. Although the costume and my behavior were not sexual, security viewed my act of going apparently topless as unfeminine and not proper for a woman to do. Gaga has faced similar backlash in her attempts to subvert social norms surrounding gender and sexuality, often finding her own gender and sexuality identities being attacked by the media and other groups as a result of her insistence that society redefines its marginalizing limitations. There's one, one of your songs is alone where you're saying you're bluffing with your muffin. Yes. <laughs> right, and, that, and then I've been inquired, there's someone who said that um, uh, Lady Gaga is actually a very well-endowed young man. <laughs> and I think that might come from that thing. But I've seen photographs from stage, and if you're well endowed, I've got no idea where you're hiding it. Right. That, you know, but that is well, a... I do have a really big donkey dick. <laughs> The relationship between each of Lady Gaga's You and I related personas and their corresponding fan reception texts highlights the ability of Gaga's unique mobilization of new media to facilitate an active position in social advocacy that might not otherwise be possible. By using social networking websites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and her own social network LittleMonsters.com, Gaga enables her materials to transcend real-world barriers such as time, geographic location, and lack of resources. 
Hi everyone, this is Gaga. Hello, Senator McCain. I have been on the internet all day watching videos that have been sent in to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In short, not only is the law unconstitutional, but it's not even being properly or fairly enforced by the government. Hi guys, it's Gaga. I'm just here to give you all an update on what's going on in Congress with Don't Ask, Don't Tell. These are all factors that prevent many individuals from being actively involved in physical activism, especially for youth who comprise the majority of Lady Gaga's little monsters. By taking her activism to the internet and converging online and offline advocacy, Gaga spreads her message further and facilitates involvement on an international scale, particularly to those who would not otherwise have access. I just wanted to tell you how proud I am of you for being such a strong advocate for the LGBT community in your school. Pause up forever. Pause up forever. Pause up again. Online involvement through things like fan reception texts enables audience members to transform themselves from passive consumers of Gaga's work into active producers of new materials. When a fan embodies, portrays, or performs one of Gaga's personas, they do activism by presenting mainstream audiences with images of non-hegemonic or marginalized identities, thereby perpetuating Gaga's theme of transgression and raising awareness of social restrictions of identity by performing gender and sexuality in alternative ways. Lady Gaga is the first musical artist to establish her own social networking website specifically for the purposes of sharing information and new materials with her fans breaking down real-world barriers between herself and them, and facilitating the establishment of an online community. A lot of entertainers now provide really intricate ways that fans can interact with each other, and sometimes, in some cases, with the entertainer themselves. Lady Gaga is capitalizing on that trend and going beyond it, says Matt Mickelson, the entrepreneur behind it, by setting up a new kind of social networking site. He talked to us by Google Hangout. That's funny. I've been quoted as saying, you want to change the world. And what we want to do is we want to allow people to gather around an interest and affinity or a movement. So it could be the Girl Scouts. It could be a sports team. It could be their church. And the identity could be, you know, I'm a Christian little monster from New York. This social network is different from Facebook, Mickelson says, because it gives users a new way to connect with people they might like, not just people they already know. Facebook could be seen as something like the people you went to high school with, right? Well, where do you find the people you wish you went to high school with? Where do you find the people that, you know, you spend your weekends with? So say you're working uh, your job, right? But then on Sundays you go and you paint your face to go to the football game. You know, you, you possibly want to have that identity and you want to share in that community around your face painting uh, uh, experiences. LittleMonsters.com and similar networking websites facilitate an online connection based on like interests. But their success and significance lie especially in the ways that these types of platforms transcend physical and social barriers. Individuals that would not otherwise come in contact because they live across the world from each other, or would perhaps not communicate outside of the online context because of differences in things like age or a lack of familiarity with one another, are brought together to discuss the interests that they have in common. With LittleMonsters.com specifically, communication about not only the common interest of Lady Gaga, but also other issues related to her career, becomes more widespread. Users and their messages or concerns are exposed to more diverse opinions, international feedback, and increased interaction on a global scale. This is how many little monsters participate in activism, by engaging with Gaga's transgressive materials and social advocacy online. While some argue that this combination also presents a recipe for increased criticism or even cyberbullying, Mickelson says that the site's basis upon something that most users enjoy, as well as the implicit environment of acceptance based on Gaga's musical and activist messages, helps to facilitate a safer space than some other social networks. In case this fails, a little monster code of conduct is made accessible to each user, and a team of content monitors is hired to discourage or remove hateful posts. In an attempt to break down the barriers between herself and fans even further, Gaga has even been known to post updates encouraging or discouraging certain behavior from her fans based on content on the website currently. Much like Gaga's convergence of online and offline activism breaks new ground in the world of social advocacy, my research explores new and developing areas of scholarly interest where pop culture, technology, and activism converge. After completing my research process, I hope to continue investigating the uniquely transgressive materials 
created by Lady Gaga, and exploring their social implications above and beyond mere entertainment by making further theoretical connections with her work. I wish to play a role in the establishment of Gaga's career as a pivotal case study for many areas of critical feminist academia, of which identity politics, subjectivity, and the evolution of activism are only a few. I believe that my research process sheds light on some of the ways that activism is evolving over time. I hope that my analysis raises consciousness about the ways in which my generation does activism differently to those who engaged in social advocacy before us. I argue that things like new media materials are multifunctional. They do not simply exist for the purposes of entertainment or expression, but rather also for the communication of important social messages. The materials analyzed here provide an example of how technology has played a role in the individualization of activism, empowering those on the periphery of more powerful activist groups to get involved. Simultaneously, however, these materials exemplify how technology can also be used to bring those individuals together as a collective. Even a single YouTube video can raise consciousness about identity politics and should therefore be considered as a form of gender or sexuality activism. Ultimately, I hope to try and share my research with Lady Gaga herself, likely using the very same new media tools that she employs in the creation and distribution of her transgressive musical and artistic materials. What is the one thing that particularly inspires you about Lady Gaga? Um, the fact that she can combine catchy club hits, amazing fashion that I can drool over, um, great dancing, um, and like performance art with the sort of social activism aspect and sort of breaking new ground with things like uh, littlemonsters.com, which nobody else in the music industry has done yet. Um, and that inspired me to come to, this is my seventh time seeing her. So come wow. to the concert that many times, make that many costumes and write my thesis. So I wanna, I wanna thank her for my academic success. <laughs> I wrote a message for the world to see and I thanked Gaga for my academic success in my Masters of Lady Gaga studies.